Night gathers, and now our podcast begins. It shall not end until we're done talking. We are the princes that were promised. Welcome to the princes that were promised. It's me. It's Shawnee Wan, and joining me as always, still the warden of Nassau County, still the supreme leader of all spoilers, but otherwise a very unhappy John Canteen. John, how are you feeling? Um, there's a lot of range of emotions right now, and um, I feel like I've been walking through like life in a daze, and I've, it's it's stupid that this show is affecting my general mood as much as it is. But then again, it's not because how many years have we? Looked forward to this, enjoyed this, talked about this. I mean, I'm not going to say we live for this show. I, I, not in I, any way. I, well, but. Let me just intervene there. I think you hit the nail on the coffin right there. I think you said the word enjoyed. And I think we all just enjoyed what was about to come. But um, this season has really, I mean, that's really slammed the big fat door in our faces. Um, that's a good way to put it. I'm just so everyone knows, there are leaks for uh, episodes five and six. Uh, we're not going to talk about them, but no, I think our but we, I think we, our mindset when we do this review of episode four, I think it's very hard pressed for us not to have the thinking what's going to happen affect yeah, these, our these, review. These look these leaks look absolutely legit and accurate. So, I guess it's a spoiler that. We're kind of bummed, <laughs> you know. We're definitely bummed out if it's the case. And, I, I, and let me say, um, I think all the people that I know who are going to watch this, these next two episodes, are going to be, you know, dumbfounded a little bit, disappointed in what's happening. Even the common TV show viewer is going to be. That's it. That's how it ends. Right. And we're not talking like at the end of, this, of The Sopranos where people were like, huh? Because that made sense later on. And maybe to some people, the end of The Sopranos made sense right away. Mm-hmm. I think this is going to be cut. It's going to be cut and dry. I don't think it's going to leave a sense of, oh, what happened like The Sopranos did. Right. I just think this is just going to leave like a whole like, that was it. That that's what this this story led up to. They 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 did that. I I think there's only one person that's actually going to sit there, and of course you know he's full of shit. That's actually going to say, "Oh, he liked it." <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, but it's Brian Silk. Yeah, and I'm sure Brian Silk will be out there saying, <laughs> "You know, uh, two years ago I said this was going to happen." You know. Citing a wiki of ice and fire for uh, yeah. Which, listen, trust me. And I, I read every single theory. I listened to every YouTube theory. None of them has it. This none of them has this. Let's, let's none put, of them do. Let's put it not this all, way: the feeling not all that, of it, definitely not all of it. The feeling that you had at the end of the long night episode. Mm-hmm. It'll be a similar feeling, I think. Yeah. At the end of the I think there's going to be no. Um, <sighs> I mean, I might smile if we see John with Ghost, if John lives. I think that that would be uh, that would be the only thing that would keep me smiling a little a little bit. Mm-hmm. But uh, the story as a whole, and what we've come from season one, which is coming to this, is just going to be just so anticlimactic. Just how episode three ended. I mean, even with Ari doing the kill, and I said it then, and we said it last week, you know, even if Ari does do the kill, even in the books, the way the show did it, where it was just like you get no information on anything, and it was just one little stab with a Valyrian steel dagger, 
there's a whole lot of that's it. That that that's it. That we eight what really eight season of this and that that's it. That's that. And I and I want to mention this and I said it briefly before. Listen, I'm sure George. I'm positive George is going to write this better than what the the showrunners have. But at the same time, if this is indeed his ending, George, you actually have the time right now to change it. <laughs> I've never seen George as that type of... I don't think he will either. I think he's just too stubborn to. I, I still have faith in George. And I think that you don't... If you don't. I just have to go on with what he, he even said a couple weeks ago. The ending will be the same. He even said it himself. So if the ending is the same, George, this is what you fucking wrote. Bro, sucks. Uh, yeah, let's not get too much into the ending because we don't want to do spoilers for, yeah, you know. I, but um, let, 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 real, real quick. Yeah, go ahead. Real quick. I would rather this end with the most my most hated person on the throne because then I can at least look back at it Sean Mm -hmm. and say you know what story wise it fits thematically it fits as much as I hate it it fits but it doesn't but let's go on to review of the last Starks yeah because I mean we we could go on all night about this, uh, you know, but eventually I feel like we'd give away the spoilers because it's, it's, yeah. it's hard to talk about it out of context. Um, but I will say that these supposed leaks, likely leaks, I'm going to call them. It seems like a lot of people have, have heard them and the people that aren't it's being starting spoiled, to get around. I think it's on Twitter now that it's starting to, um, and, and I think the reason that the, it's on Twitter is because they're the prospect of this being the ending is so disappointing. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they made, there was a couple of scenes in this episode, season episode four, that looks like we're going down that route. Yeah, it, it really does add up. But all right, so episode four is called The Last of the Starks, The Last Stark, The Last of the Starks. The Last of the Starks. Now, why are they, we, we've talked that about before, why have they refrained from putting the episode titles on before the episode? Well, I, I do think HBO made a much better effort of stopping the leaks for this series. And I think they might have been, uh, well, obviously they were a little bit overconfident in their security. I think the delay of the name of the episode until after the episode has aired was them thinking people would not just speculate, but maybe be able to put two and two together based on, the names of the episode. So, episode three, I mean, you and I knew that was going to be the big... Yeah, but we knew that. I mean, I think everyone well, knew you, that episode you, three was going to be... You and I knew that, but yeah. I think HBO was thinking that some fans would see the title of episode three and be, okay, that's... You know, that's the big battle. But you know what? <laughs> if someone saw the, last, the title of episode four, the last of the stars before it came out, I think people would be like, okay... One of the Starks are dying, if not two, if not three of the Starks are dying. But I think actually what the title brings up is, and this is kind of like my only hope that these leaks that we're talking about aren't true, is it says the last of the Starks. Well, we, we've talked about this. You know, how is there going to be a Stark line? John isn't a Stark, and you have two females, and, and Bran is Bran. Bran... It's a three-eyed raven. I think it's safe to say that that's not an answer that we're going to get. Um, you know, I, I thought there would be questions left unanswered with this series. And part of me is like, all right, well, that's okay, because I'm okay with leaving some things to the imagination, you know, trying to speculate on some loose strands, if you will. At this point, I prefer we don't get any more answers from Benioff and Weiss. I don't want any more answers from them. Um, did you know that they were in this episode? 
Oh, man. Maybe that's why I didn't like it so much. <laughs> where, where were they in this episode? Uh, they were in the they were in the um, scene where uh, they celebrate in the beginning in the, with the film. And this is the scene where I'm going to talk about a lot. And um, where the Tormund is talking about John, you know, always fighting back. They're one of, like, the wildling creep people in the back. They look, they look like, kind of like wildlings. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're there. Well, watch it again. You'll see it now. Now that if you know the scene, you'll see them. I don't know if I'm going to watch this episode again, though, John. <laughs> um, but I will say that the time it took them to get into costume and the time it took them to get into their places, that would have been time better spent working on a rewrite. Um. Uh, let's just we'll, we'll go through the episode real quick, and then we'll, we'll mm-hmm. talk about our thoughts. So. I didn't write notes down for this. I'm not going to write notes down for any of the next two episodes. Um, and that has nothing to do with the leaks. I I just decided myself. I just really wanted to watch these episodes without having to like look away mm-hmm. and not pay attention. Yeah, I, I wanted to watch them. Yeah. No, I I'm I'm with you. I actually started taking notes the first episode, and then I was like. What's I, I want to enjoy this and I want to like keep yeah writing so notes. but now it's at a point where I might miss something that I know I might not have with some foreshadowing lines but because I but I realize all the foreshadowing lines for shit so right well plus it's, I was wrong. it's like why all the lines for shit why are we going to put so much effort into reviewing an episode that Benioff and Weiss didn't put as much effort into making I right, so we get the mass funeral burning of the bodies that went to fell. Mm-hmm. John Snow's speech. How did you feel about that? I thought it was good. I mean, I just thought, you know, it's the usual John Snow type of speech. You know, remembering everyone and uh, making sure that, you know, the the theme is that, you know, make sure not only your uh, children remember these people who died, but your children's children remember them who fought here, who <laughs> put away our differences. But meanwhile, now, <laughs> 10 minutes later, we're going to put our differences aside again and go against our differences again, you know? Well, I feel like it was a... a uh... Let me ask you a question. I'm sorry, I'm sorry to cut you off. No, it's all right. Do you think in the books, do you think the Battle of King's Landing... I, I'm not seeing the Battle of Cersei because I, I still have a feeling the Battle of King's Landing has to do with Fagin. But I yep. could be wrong on that. Do you think that's going to take first before the Battle for the Dawn? And the show just won the Battle for the Dawn first, then go back to the political bullshit? I feel like the battle because that's what my friend said to me. At, at, uh, I feel like my friend, the guy who comes in and work and talks game, comes to me. I feel like the battle for the dawn will upend battle for King's Landing. Like I, I don't. If there's a battle for King's Landing, it's Daenerys and Young Griff, fairly close to when Daenerys lands on Westeros. I think the battle for the dawn will. I think it may run through Winterfell and and go further south. Um, And ultimately, Iron Throne, no Iron Throne, whatever the end of the politicking side, the the rule of Westeros, I think the Battle for the Dawn will kind of integrate with that battle. Does that make sense? Like, uh, um, Mm -hmm. yeah, I, I think, I think it'll be a united Westeros against the others. I don't think it'll be a northern Dragonstone alliance with the Vale beating the others and then going to deal with the South. But what do I know? You know, I'm no I'm no TV writer like uh, David Benioff and D.B. Weiss. No. Uh, what, what does a D.B. stand for? Well, I think it's don't. Dan's in there involved there, I think. I think Dan's involved someplace in that name. It's like David Benioff and David Benioff Weiss. <laughs> Denny, Denny Boy Weiss? I don't know. <laughs> Dumb bastard Weiss. Yeah. Yeah, John's speech uh, I, I thought was very kingly. I thought it was very Aragorn-esque. Um, and the celebration I actually kind of enjoyed. I didn't see the Starbucks cup until... <laughs> no, until no, not for until the day after night. I, I didn't see that... Um, Listen, it wasn't a it wasn't a a terrible episode to sit through, but looking back on it, there's a lot of things that I have problems with. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do like Daenerys uh, naming 
Gendry, the Lord of Storm's mm-hmm. End, because at this point, you know. It was a good tactical decision on her point to, mm-hmm. uh, you know, to get an ally, another ally, you know. I mean, granted, for him to be a help to her, he's got to go back to Storm's End. He's got to establish some kind of council to help him rule, and he's going to have to uh, conscript a bunch yeah. of uh, and, and small folk to be soldiers. But And Sansa realized that uh, what she was doing was uh, a political maneuver. Yeah, Sansa was a bit, we think, a little, a little bit jealous of that move? Or? No, I, I, I think she, I wouldn't say jealous, but I think, you know, I think she was just kind of, I don't want to say, she was kind of very like, seriously, bitch? Really? Really? <laughs> really? <laughs> really? <laughs> You're going to do that right now? <laughs> so you you think that Sansa saw the tactical side of what she was yeah, doing? Yeah, she saw, she saw that, she, you know, what she was doing. Because I think a lot of people they're celebrating would say, you know what? He deserves that. Because right. Not, not just because he's Robert's bastard, but because he's been such a help with this, with this, uh, one night battle. Yeah, but Sansa's, Sansa's view in this is, and kind of as Tyrion viewed it too. Tyrion went out, you know, when she sent to, went to Danny and, and, uh, and Danny is like, you're not the one who's clever. That's what Sansa turned around. She's like, all right. Yeah, I got you. I got gotcha. you. Um, and they're not even hiding their disdain for one another. At this no, point. no, not at all. Not at all. Um, so Gendry, he follows up his, uh, lordship with a proposal to Arya Stark. Yep. And just like Lyanna before, <laughs> turns down a Baratheon. Yep. History repeating itself. So how about the Jamie and, uh, Brienne, the drinking game into the, uh, into the love making. Now, do you kind of think that was going to happen? You know, uh-huh. even though when I saw them doing the drinking game, I was like, yeah, I think they're going to probably, uh, you know, yeah. go into the bedroom. Lights off. Definitely lights off. Yeah. So I'm not sure if that's fan service, if that's going to happen. Uh, but it definitely, there seems definitely something that, you know, that the um, the D&D boys would like to push forward. So keeping in mind how this episode ends for Jamie, do you think it would have been easier to swallow if he hadn't had this romantic interview yeah. with Brienne? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I didn't think we'd get – I mean, listen, before this season aired, all our previews – Talking about this season, the John Connington line that we wanted Jamie to have. Yeah, I mean that. That's another thing that just not happening. Yeah, he doesn't even know about John. No, you know, I, I really thought. No, he does not. Know. <sighs> I guess it's just a whole bunch of. Uh, I mean, definitely in the show, uh, and maybe in the books. The whole Rhaegar on the Anna thing is just like a red herring. A slight red herring, really. Much to my, uh, so would, much to my, chir- my, much to my chagrin. It'd be an incredibly subtle red herring because it's not so obvious in the books. And let's not, you know, let's not, let's not open that door, but it's, uh, I just thought that I'm just the Jamie side of it, him, him doing another 180. Just that you know, you know what's so funny, and I and I, and I think along the lines, and and I think we'll talk about this probably more down the line after the show has been over, and we'll have you know we'll talk about you know uh, you know looking back, and I, I'm sure there's a lot of moments we can look back on, and that handshake that Jamie and John had in the first season, that's just a, another thing that just seems like all for naught, that the show set up that was just all for naught. Well, we could do a whole other podcast series, it seems, once this show right. ends. Right. I mean, I don't want to get too much involved in on it because I think we'll, we'll just go to sidetrack. Well, because there's, there's I, a ton I, of scenes that, like, you know, that's this probably the first of many, many. If you, if you saw that handshake, if you were, like, a normal just TV viewer and you saw that handshake they had, I I think anyone would say these two are going to have something down the line. 
I don't know what it is. It could be a one-on-one fight. It could be the McKenzie turn. It could be them with each other. It could be, you know, but something. Nothing. And nothing happened. And it doesn't look like anything will happen. Well, Jamie and Bri- Oh, excuse me. I think, I feel like Jamie and Brian was kind of a, you know, you could kind of see that coming. Um, mm-hmm. Although it, I've seen some memes and they're right. She would have been better off with Tormund. Yeah, because Tormund actually would have really jelly cared for her. <laughs> right. You know? <laughs> he, well, he definitely wouldn't go running back to his twin sister. Which yeah. which is, you know, that's what it seems he's doing. You know? Yeah, well, we'll, we'll get on that, I think, at the end. Yeah. Let's not jump. Because I think that's a lot of cloudiness. Yeah. What he's going to do. Um, so, the second Winterfell War Council, this time. Well, I, I think he missed a very big portion, Judge, uh, Sean. Um, oh, uh, Daenerys and John, right? Yeah. Right, that that right that. there, um, that right there is two things. Uh, it's actually a few things. And first off, here's the big difference between Danny and John. John doesn't need dragons to have people respect him and love him. Danny does. How many people generally love Danny if she didn't have the dragons? She didn't have the dragons. What is she? I, I, well, I think that's the. And again, I, you know, we're going we're going to go into speculation, but at this point, and at least as far as this subject, the idea of Danny. Whether it's like a, a a complete heel turn where you're like you're rooting for her demise if this happens, or if it's something where it's more like a uh, a Tony Soprano situation or, or like a Walter White Breaking Bad situation where, from an objective point of view, whatever this character does, it's that's an antagonist. It's, it's a bad guy, but but we we side with her because we've known her for so long. Mm-hmm. Either way, at the end at the end of the day, yeah, it's because of her her dragons, and maybe some people love her, but most of the people I'm not don't even love her. getting on to that point, Jason. I'm not I'm not I'm not there yet. I know what you're saying. Well, I'm, I'm not there that that part of the argument. What I, what I'm saying is all these people that she's gathered, the Thraki, the Unsullied, right, et cetera, et cetera. She's gone on them because out of fear. That's that's yeah. That's it's essentially she what I'm saying. She has gone love because of fear. Whereas John has gone love because of respect. Right. So, so like they look at her on dragons and it's, it's a fear thing. And then they look right. at John on a dragon and it's an impressive thing. Like, how did you do that? It's a brave that, man to ride a dragon. Exactly. If you notice what Tormund said, and it's setting it up, it's setting it up. He says, who rides a dragon? Either a madman, Danny, mm-hmm. or a king. I'm surprised John didn't pick up on that and say something to kind of smooth that over, but he just mm-hmm. let it ride. He just looked at Danny. He's trying. But another thing at this point in time that Danny's looking at this situation is not only does she is she realizing that people love John, mm-hmm. and this is a problem for me. Not only is he the heir, mm-hmm. he is. He is the rightful heir. Fuck you, you're clean, Danny. You don't deserve mm-hmm. anything. She is now seeing John of all the stories she'd heard about Rhaegar from specifically from Barristan, how everyone loved Rhaegar. But, right, yeah, that's- she's seeing that in John. Yes. She sees they they're loving John just how they love the Rhaegar. And it's not it's not just the people loving John; it's how John reacts to this love. You know, he's not even like an aw shucks. It's it's he's he's very. You know, he'll accept the praise and then, and then move on. Like he doesn't want, mm-hmm. he doesn't want a lot of praise and he doesn't want, you know, when, when somebody gives you praise and you're like, nah, it wasn't anything. That's not humble. You know, it, it that's kind of asking for more praise. You know, like, oh, you did such a good job. It was so brave of you to ride a dragon. Ah, no, you know, it wasn't anything. Anybody could have done it. No, 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 no. Only you can do it. You know, that's, but accepting the praise, right? Thank you. You know, I, I I don't know what to say. It was it was scary, but I did it. Hey, how about Daenerys? She wrote a dragon too. You know, that's mm-hmm. you know that's that's being humble about it. But and and I think John falls more into that latter category, which 
is the same category I think Rhaegar would have fell into, you know, a- accepting your role and knowing that any sort of accomplishment you have, any, you know, brave deed or any brave decision or, or any act of heroics that you perform, that's what's expected of you. You know, you're not supposed to, you're supposed to do that. You know, even though, I mean, he's not the king, but as the warden of the north, he's supposed to do the things that he does. And he knows that, you know, for John, maybe he's a little more hands-on than most rulers. You know, if we want to call him a ruler here, I mean, he's the warden of the north. Um, Maybe he's a little more hands-on than most rulers, but he is, he's doing what he thinks a ruler is supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's not the case with Daenerys. And, you know, Daenerys, you know, granted, I I feel bad for her somewhat because, you know, she goes to help out the North. They win this, this, this big victory and she's helping out the realm by doing it too. And yes, she didn't deliver the killing blow to the Night King, but without the Unsullied, without her dragons. I'm not going to say anything mm-hmm. about the Dothraki. That was just a waste. But yeah. but with well, even Arya says it to Sansa that she you know with, with he she agreed right. with John. They, they wouldn't have that they without her. We 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 would be fucking dead. Right. But of course, Sansa doesn't see it that way. But but Danny isn't able to enjoy this victory because she gets brushed aside again, and Jon Snow's the hero. Arya is the hero. Um. And it's just and, how the and it's just how the North is. Well, because because she's an outsider. It's like, it's like you're right, and it's just like the stories we told we've we've talked about with uh, how they treated Ned. Oh yeah, Ned, dude, this guy killed off the Dane. This guy, dude, don't mess with the North, man. This winter's coming, dude. Ned's gonna kill you. Yeah. You know, that's just how it is. And then Daenerys follows us up with this decision, th- a decision to make Gendry Lord, and it's it's a tactical decision this is a good decision so she has a little bit of a high and then she sees these guys talking to john and and oh it's a, you know a brave man or a mad or a madman a king or a madman yeah. it's just kind of right. like and she's like okay she was saying well that, to me that right there is a giveaway that she's gonna come mad i mean it's setting up that yeah. she's gonna come mad right she's gonna be the mad queen yeah, um, yeah we'll get to more. that next well uh, i just wanted to comment real quick on uh, sure. this on uh on Varys. Varys, yes. Right over her shoulder. And, uh, I mean, what, she sees, what, he sees something going on. Like, you think he sees that in that moment? Uh, Cause I get the vibe that he was, he saw that she was not participating in the rebels and where she should have felt good about this victory. She was not feeling good. Right. Um, yep. That's how I felt that he, you know, like, why is she not? Yeah. There's something up. Yeah. She's some, she's hunting something. And then we go the next scene we got. Yeah, it's it's a it's a big scene because and it, she's trying to be yeah. ta- she's trying to be you know she's thinking about how, how she was tactical she's trying to be tactical again like she she's not it isn't about her don't tell any John. don't tell anyone and this is how you do it and John's like I listen I get it but I gotta tell Sansa and Arya and I don't blame John because I think part of the reason why he's gotta tell Sansa and Arya is because uh, of Ned. And plus, they're his sisters. Like whoever he is, right. he was raised with them. Uh, so the same, got a- same way that Theon is a part of the Stark family by the end, with his demise. At the very least, that's how it is for John too. Like he's he's whatever whoever his parents are, he's a Stark at heart. You know, not not as far as him being able to take Winterfell or whatever, but he's he's part of the Stark family. So those are his sisters, and. If he starts lying to them or keeping secrets from them, forget about it. For a guy like John, can't do it. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I and mean, I, mean, I think it goes. I think it goes to me. It also goes back to that. He's, you know, I'm sure he knows that the girls have had have had to hear some, uh, you know, some side comments over the years. That you know, as great as your father is, he still you know slept with another woman. He still cheated on your mother. Not only that. I mean, that's that's a bigger, you know, a bigger reason to tell them than what I'm going to say. But if Rhaegar is John's father, yeah, John kind of owes it to his sisters for them to know the truth. Lyanna wasn't raped by Rhaegar, right? 
Because that's the story that they hear. They, you know, yeah. like Santa sees that, says that in season five with uh, Littlefinger. You know, she was, yeah, he, yeah, he can, you know, yeah, he loved, you know, but he kidnapped and raped her. That's, you know, that's, that, that was, has still been the working story because Robert Baratheon won that war, you know, so, um, they've grown up believing it. And not that, I, I mean, you can look at it one hand, John owes something to Rhaegar because it's his father. So he does, you know, he owes the truth. For the truth to be out there, you can also look at it like he well he never met Rhaegar. He doesn't know Rhaegar from a hole in the wall. So, you know it, it it may make the boat a bit rocky to put that out there. But we know John, and John's going to tell the truth. He, he's he is Ned's son. He was raised by Ned, uh, so he's going to tell the truth. But parlaying that into Danny, like. She, thinks- she comes off so bad here. I'm sorry. I know, I know there's a lot of Danny lovers out there that she comes off so bad. And I'll say it again. She's the biggest hypocrite there is in this story right now. Yeah. All these years, she want you know, she got treated so, you know, the only family she knew were the stories of her father, how bad he was. Um, and Viserys always treated her like shit. You know, now you have a family member. And you're just like, you know, you're just, I mean, well, she's oh, using, since I feel, she's, yeah, she's using. Her love for him, if if she even loves, him. I don't think she she does love him. I don't think she's capable. Yeah, I think I think it's gone now. But she's she, using that as a tactic to get him to promise that he'll never reveal the truth. But not only that, her brother Rhaegar. Everybody, part of the reason why nobody is accepting her in the North is because Rhaegar raped and killed Lyanna because her father was the Mad King. Right, so if she can put the truth out there, it's better for her also. No, Rhaegar didn't rape Lyanna. I'm like my brother, not my father. Right. And and, and telling the truth about that, it, that's better for her. But she's so consumed with the Iron Throne. And, mm-hmm. you know, any mm-hmm. any conflict she had in Essos, she shows up at, at you know, uh, uh, any of these Slaver cities, she shows up and there's resistance from the rulers and appreciation from the slaves, black and white. And the, even the, 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 the conflicts you'd have with the rulers of these slave cities, there was some respect there for her because they feared the dragon. So she had the same road where she came in as an outsider, feared and, ex- and and accepted by the slaves, and it worked to her advantage. She was able to take city after city after city, and that's not the case when she gets to Westeros, and she she doesn't know how to handle it. You know, she's this entire time a queen. You know, makes a, a sacrifice. You know, she does what she has to do for her people. You know, she'll make a sacrifice for her people, but her idea of a sacrifice is, is marrying. Marrying like somebody she doesn't love. That's her idea of a sacrifice. Mm-hmm. You know, if, if she was who she said she, if she, if she was really being who she thinks she is or who she is pretending to be, the best option here, right? The one that will unite the North and the veil behind her and Jon Snow is the truth. The truth will set you free. The truth is what would have, that would, Maybe not put her on the Iron Throne. Maybe it does put John on the Iron Throne. Right? But you're going to do a lie like this? It, it doesn't work out. Especially with Targaryens. It's not going to work out. Um, and she had it. Dude, she had it. Right? You, you think about guys like Varys, Littlefinger, you know, these people close to power that don't want the Iron Throne themselves. They just want to kind of manipulate things, you know, to their advantage. It's easier for them to op- for them to operate, for them to manipulate, to weave their webs when there's division among the ruling family, and that's throughout Westerosi history. So if Daenerys loves John the way she says she does, she knows John is trustworthy. She knows he's loyal. What was the line she said? He's the second man I've ever trusted. Mm-hmm. I guess the first being. Drogo? I, I don't. I imagine, yeah, I imagine Kyle Drogo, yeah. Poor fucking Jorah. Although, you know, Jorah did, did her dirty at one point, but if she trusts John, 
that's a union that can't be divided then. Mm -hmm. But she has to do what John would do, and that's tell the truth. And then that would unite how stark to her. And that's, that's a, a, those are ingredients for a successful war campaign to win the Iron Throne and the ingredients to. Yeah, she's definitely not, she's not looking at it that way. She's, she's looking at it so single minded and so like single viewed. And she is used to everyone being a threat to her, I guess. You know, that's, that's the mindset that Viserys, it, you gotta keep in mind, she, she was a kid when her mom died. Uh, a baby when her mom died. She just born when her mom died. She killed her mm-hmm. mom. But, you know, Viserys has been taughting her, teaching her everything she knows about Westeros and everything she knows about ruling for most of her life, you know? So y- you kind of understand why she is the way she is, but it's she's got no one to blame but herself. Right, so the, the North will support Daenerys because she helped them out, but they're not really behind her. Yeah, she's still an invader in their eyes. She's still a foreigner. Right. Is, did the Vale march south with her? You know? Like, like they're behind her, but they're just like, we have the North. We beat, we beat the, the, you know, we beat the, gr- the greater threat. Cersei's not coming North. And she's not. Cersei's not going to march North. Can you see Cersei marching North? No, it goes against the leaks we saw earlier on the season, no, no. before the season started, months ago. No, I'm saying, but she's not. No, hypothetically, like, could you see Cersei marching north? No. Right? So, like, what reason do any of the rulers of the north have besides the obligation that John made for them? What reason do, do any of the rulers of the north have to support Danny in this war? It's, it's almost like needless violence and death and, and destruction. For them, it's needless. They don't, they're fine. They beat the White Walkers. Now they got to focus on rebuilding. And Danny's not looking at all these things. And you know what? Varys and Tyrion should have seen that also. Mm-hmm. You know? Um. Were you a little disappointed? Uh, I mean, I guess part of it could have been repetitive to the audience, but were you a little disappointed that the reveal to Sansa and Arya was off screen? Yes, yeah, and, and, and there's a there's quite a few things that happen that seem to happen off screen that should not have happened off screen. Mm-hmm. That being the first one, it's like okay, now his family's going to find out the truth, right? And it's like cut. But, so, and I have a bigger problem with it because this is a Benioff and Weiss episode. And it felt a little bit like they mailed in the teleplay last week. That's mailing in the teleplay. That's something you need to write. That's a, it, like just like the the White Walkers. That's a multi multiple season, multiple year storyline, and you need the payoff. But they don't get it. Like we're supposed to think like, oh, we can only imagine how they reacted. You know, it's more interesting to see what they do with this information. No. Some cases, yeah, with some things, but not with that thing and not in that case with these characters. You need the reaction. Yeah, and I think it definitely needs the reaction from Sansa. Yeah. Because of this, the you know, we talked about before the scene in episode five, Littlefinger, season five. Um, so it's kind of like a shot down to her a little bit. Like, you know, Reg Arley and I loved each other. They weren't, you know, they weren't, he didn't rape her. And John's their son. His name was Aegon. And, and honestly, also with Sansa, I want to see her reaction because I want to know what she's thinking. Like, does she think like, oh my God, that's so crazy. Or does she immediately start thinking, how can I use this information to my advantage? I think a little bit of both. But we don't. <laughs> From what we know. I mean, we, we definitely would have liked to have seen it, but definitely, you know, <laughs> There was a meme out there, you know, when there was a picture of uh, Eddard Stark. He's like, 18 years, he never gave up the secret. It took Santa 10 minutes. What? She's, she's, she's her mother's daughter. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, you know, the scene when he goes to... to well, well, first, they have the war council. And, uh, and, and it's just obvious that nobody's interested in this campaign. You mm-hmm. know, begrudgingly, they'll go because John... 
And John knows he John's doing it because she's he's trying to sadly he's trying to butter up to Danny in this, like to make him you know, hey look, see I'm on your side. Don't you know you have look what I'm gonna do. I'm on your side on this. But I can't see like I can't see this even John wanting to do this. Because all this is No, I think no, no, definitely not. After after the Battle of the Long Night, this is just honestly it's just vanity. It's vanity. Because like I said, Cersei's not sending anybody north. And her biggest power right now is at sea. You know, the Golden Company is whatever they are, at the end of the day, they're cell swords. So if things are not going their way, they're not gonna fight to the last man. You know, they're gonna live to fight another day. And that's the case with most all cell sword companies. Um, other than that, other than the Golden Company, Cersei's biggest power is, is the Royal Navy at this point with the, with the Iron Fleet. Iron Fleet's not getting to Winterfell. Iron Fleet's not taking the North. They're going to sail all the way around Westeros and, and, you know, come at them through Bear Island. They'll stop at Bear Island and fucking take Bear Island. And, you know, like it, it's, Cersei's not a threat to anyone in the North. And, while it's important for, for Daenerys and, and while maybe John believes in her cause, after what they saw, the true horrors of what they saw, how, how can, you know, taking King's Landing seem like a good idea to anyone? Um, so John, I feel like John's only in this because he gave her her word. And he's, he's just doing it out of his... He owes her because that was the deal he made. So he's going to sign through. But there's there's no way that he thinks it's a good idea to be doing this now. Yeah, de- de- well, definitely not now. He, in a rather about way, I mean, I think Sansa's just throwing out there they need to recover just to do anything to go against Danny. But in a, in a way, I think John sees that you know deep down they need they do need to recuperate. You know, absolutely, they do need to take some time off and just recover. Hell, you know what? You can argue that, um, you know, uh, Rhaegal needed and Drogon needed to recover also. Mm-hmm. They, they took a, they took quite a beating. Uh, yeah. I mean, Rhaegal had a hole in his wing. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's, it's kind of, and Danny should know that also. Like Daenerys should know that they need to regroup. And she should also use that time to be working the Starks politically, to be working Sansa, to be, you know, forging a, a true alliance, not one built on obligation. Um, but she doesn't, she wants to, she wants to get out of there. She's not comfortable there and she wants to get out of there and she wants to win the Iron Throne because that's, that's her comfort zone is, is, you know, despite what she says she is and what she's willing to do for her people, her comfort zone is, Taking cities. That's where she's her best. And it's not even like she's a great mind for war. She just, you know, she's, she's had these, a barbarian army and a slave army and she's good at taking cities. And this is where the episode, well, we have the scene in, in the Weirwood with, with John and, uh, Oh, it's because Arya and Sansa want to talk to him. Mm-hmm. Were you uh, a little bit mad at Arya and Sansa for uh, talking to him here? Like, did you did you side with that? No, not not you know, not really. Uh, I think I, I I think you felt it was coming the way that John you know took Danny's side. You kind of felt like they wanted to speak to him. And Arya goes to bat for John. You know, she she understands why John did what he did. Um, and I, 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 what is? Yeah, I think she played both. I think she played both. Son, that 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 played. I don't. I don't. I don't want to say she played both. She 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 um took both sides on Sansa, you know, which on Sansa and John, and I think you know came to the crossroads, and and then it just kind of you know it led right into the reveal, you know, uh, you know, where your family, you know, you're 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 a Stark, and he's like, uh. <laughs> Yeah, about that. See, so so Benny and Weiss are taking two easy easy outs there. They're bringing no conclusion to this important conversation, mm-hmm. right? They're using right. a big reveal. Mm-hmm. They're using a reveal as a way to get out of right. it, and then they're not even giving the full reveal. Lazy. Other than that, I did like the scene. I think Arya was there for John, 
right? Like, I think Arya's concern was definitely John. Like, she's not one of us, so, you know, I, I get it. You had to. You know what? We don't want to lose you. Right, you had to do that, but let's, you know, let's be smart about this. Like, I understand your obligation. You got to keep your word. And I understand why you made that commitment, but let's, you know, let's be smart about this. But we don't know, we don't know what, what, what their point was because we don't get to it because John drops a bomb and we don't see him dropping the bomb. And he doesn't even, Bran does it. Yeah, Bran, yeah. <laughs> Tell him. Which is okay because I don't, you know, John's not that kind of guy to be like, I'm really the king, you know, I'm, I'm Rhaegar Targaryen. Son, you know, like he, he's, he's, he's a modest guy and he's not, and he's humble and he doesn't, he doesn't want that kind of attention. Um, okay. So from here, the, I, I just feel like the episode falls apart. So while we have, yeah, I think up until that point, the episode was okay. Yeah, I think it was, it was okay. It was actually, it yeah, was there actually was definitely rather good. I thought up until that point. And then it just, everything just really hits the shit. Mm-hmm. You know, we had the scene with Sansa and Tyrion, and you you could tell in that scene Sansa's going to tell Tyrion. Yeah. About John. Right. You, you just know it. You just know she's going to give that up. And no follow up on their conversation in the crypt, or no. or, their, or their moment of of uh, you know mental intimacy or emotional intimacy where they they had the bond. It's over and done with. That was last week. Yeah. Now we're back to to scheming how to get Cersei off the throne. Um. And I'd have Danny on the throne. Well, 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 there's a better option. Well, I mean, she's right. There is a better option. Mm-hmm. And it, you know, kudos to kudos to Tyrion for not for not giving up on Daenerys right away. You know, and that part of that may be he has a, a sense of loyalty that you know most advisors don't. But he does have to see the wisdom in. John ruling as opposed to Daenerys. Uh, I mean, it's, it's a, it's an A1 clusterfuck at, at Winterfell. Yeah, they won the battle, but no alliances are really made. No one believes mm-hmm. in Danny the way that the cities across the sea in Essos, the way that those people would believe in Danny. Danny has, has become <laughs> almost, you know, if she was an enemy when she, when she came up and not welcome, she hasn't made any headway in being more welcome or being less of an enemy. And Tyrion has to see that. You know, the thing is, like, it's it's funny. We say that, you know, people in the North just would love John, And I think that people in the South would love John more than Danny because John's been a Westerosi. And, uh, you know, Danny still is looked as a foreigner. Yeah. But the South is weird. They're, they're you know. It's it's just weird, and it's not a place that any of the Starks are really interested in. It seems, you know. Well, I'm just saying, as a popular opinion, I think that even if John, if it was known that he was Rhaegar's son, him, throughout Westeros from north and south, he would be would be more welcomed than Danny would ever be. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she, uh, yeah, yeah. You're right. It's crazy, man. And Danny's just pushing ahead. So what happens with Rhaegal, um, it, it does make narrative sense because she's just, you know, it's like she's putting the blinders on and just going full force to King's Landing. Um, so while it makes sense that the second dragon is killed in this episode, the mechanics of it, the writing of the scene, the logistics of it are just... It's like, come on. Like, you just, you're just trying to get a shock moment again. And we talked about this last week with their shock moments. George has come on the statement and said that uh, no dragon has ever been killed mm-hmm. by a, an arrow. I think he said or one, anything one dragon that, throughout this. One. And, and, and that was only because of one in a million shot that went right through the eyeball. Mm-hmm. And that was during the Dance of the Dragons, right? So that's mm-hmm. dragon versus dragon, tons of dragons involved. It's, it's not like, you know. Uh... You know. Dude, that shot, right? Because based on, on 
I mean, let's put aside that they can't see an entire island, the entire iron. Right. Well, I was just going to say know. that. That's just like, that's that's it's, it's asinine. So it's not even worth commenting on. It's just stupid. But and, they, and you want to talk about plot armor? They get three shots in a row on Rago that nail them, mm-hmm. and then there's a fleet of ships that we see, and they're firing about what fifteen. Or so, let's just call it 15, you'd say? And they all miss. And they all miss. Right. But that's because, I guess we're supposed to believe they miss because uh, Danny was riding him, right? Well, and I can, I can get that a little bit. I, I mean, it's, But you still, know. you know, and like, you know, it's just so funny with your arm. It's just like, you know, <laughs> one of my boards that they said that, you know, no one took... <laughs> No one took, you know, into uh, consideration that um, Yorn has a Romulan cloak, a cloaking device on him that he can just, you know, you know, for the show riders, he's just there to be there at, at all times. Okay, yeah. To to mess shit up. Yeah. And, and you know what? Come- Without any kind of... Um, um, he's an agent of chaos. Yeah, without any detailing that he's going you know, a, a story arc that he's going to be there or, or, or game planning. You know, the good guys always seem to have a game plan that falls on the face, and we never see any kind of game planning from Cersei and Euron, but just that the fact that Euron's ships are always there. Right. So this, this is another, uh, part of it that is real disappointing for me and not, I mean, I mean, okay, first with Euron, he was one of the highlights for me. In the last series, right in, in season seven, mm-hmm. I was going to mention this to you. Go, go yeah. ahead, though. Um, and I had much higher hopes for him in this season, um, but he—it it seems he's fallen into the role of cliche lackey, uh, lackey you know, uh, you know, right hand monster. You know, like he's like another uh, Gregor Cl- Clegane almost. Mm-hmm. Um, but a hey, uh, Ramsey Bolton of, uh, of sorts. Well, he's I, the character I think is intended to be the progression of Joffrey to Ramsey to Euron in terms of the damage they do uh, to to the, to the pro- to protagonists of this narrative. You know, each one increasing in the ability in in the damage that they that they can cause. Um. And I'm not even going to comment on on the Crow's Eye character uh, from the books because it's, it's mm-hmm. at this point they're two different characters. Um, you know, he just happens to be the character that they choose. Like it, they could, it could be any character. You know, they could have made up, you know, uh, Sam of House Malone is siding with Cersei and he's crazy. You know, and he's helping her. Like it could be anybody. Um, but with the bigger problems with Cersei, right? Because Cersei has been treated as she hasn't been treated as a protagonist, right? She she's been a borderline antagonist this whole series. Mm-hmm. But you just said it; they don't show any planning on their side. Like they they're just making her the enemy, and and that's bad writing because she hasn't been just the just the enemy. But now she's just the enemy. Yeah, we understand her motives because we know the character, but the way she's being presented <laughs> in the writing. She's just the bad guy. She she may as well be Skeletor. It's a problem. It's a problem. Um, and then my other problem is <laughs> it, it's like Stannis leading the charge at King's Landing, first one up the wall. Uh, I'm mm-hmm. the king. I should, I'll be first one up the wall with no helmet, right? That's kind of what Euron, Euron's doing when he when he's shooting the scorpion. He's the captain of the ship. Why is he shooting the scorpion? You need a guy that shoots the scorpion. You're you're the only guy that can shoot a scorpion. Yeah, it's a, they just want to show a face that that little crazy little face that he has. And I what I wanted to ask you, and I think you kind of right, may have even said it. And I, I and I know we season six. I think we we looked at Euron. I think we had the same feelings we had right now. Yes. And I thought in season seven, I thought we all decided, you know what? I liked him this season. I mean, he was, he, that was definitely an improvement. They gave him some depth. You know, the, the actor did a real good job, but the right. actor can only do a real good job if there's somewhat good writing. And that's what, 
this season has lacked was some good writing. You know, first two episodes aside, I, I think the second episode was honestly one of the stronger episodes of the entire series. A, a, a Night of the Seven Kingdoms. I think that's, that may be a, it's definitely a top 10 and maybe a top five episode for me. Um, but other than that, the writing is, has not been, not been that great. Episode one was pretty good, but three and four, the writing's just, you know, for, for guys that, that should have such a grasp on this material by this point, doing mm-hmm. it for so many years, they, this should be like a, a crescendo to the work they've been doing. And it's just like, they're just like, eh, it doesn't matter. Just make sure, you know. And, and you would think with this season being the, you know, the last that with that meeting with George, they would want so much more information about how it ends and where it's going so they can write it. Then they would maybe on stuff that was, you know, some storylines ago. So, what do you think? It, you think it's overconfidence on their part to not seek George? I just, I just think, again? I just think they're hacks. I just yeah. think I really, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, I, I, I said last week. You know, I defended them a lot. I gave them a lot of excuses over the years, mm-hmm. but uh, you know, episode three turned me, and they did nothing in episode four that could turn me back. Uh, they made it worse, and uh, we haven't talked about the. Um, The John Goodbye scene, that, that just, you know, oh, and right. yeah. it, 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 it's something you've always said, and I, I'm going to disagree slightly. You've always said that you f- you have a feeling that they don't understand the um, the story. Are you talking about Benny Off and Weiss? Okay. Yes. I'm going to, I'm going to say that I know you, I understand what you're saying. I, I disagree with the terminology of understand. I just don't think they have any respect for it. Like it, like it's boring be, to them. Be, right. Be, well, yes. Because if they had respect for it, it wouldn't matter how much money it would have cost on CGI. You would have had Jon Snow go over there and pet Ghost mm-hmm. and, and, and wish him farewell. And I, I made a point to that on, on Twitter, and some guy came back with his whole, you know... Well, this is, you know, this is John's. I understand why John did it. I understand that he's done, given up his. He's an idiot. He's given yeah, up his. Yeah. I understand, you know, thematically, he literally, figuratively, he's given up his starkness, maybe given up the direwolf. I understand that. I understand that he's, and I appreciate it, he's probably saving Ghost's life. We already seen, you know, he's got the chopped up ear, he's, his stomach's kind of got ripped open, it looked like a little bit. He's saving Ghost's life, and I appreciate that. It kind of makes me happy, at least, that I'm not going to have to see this direwolf die. <laughs> it may be the highlight of the season so far. <laughs> that yeah. we know Ghost is going to be all right. But for them to go out there and have just John just nod at him, that goes against the character of Jon Snow in the books. And it's just killing, again, it's just killing the character of Jon Snow. I mean, you, I mean, I see, you see it on social media how, oh my God, Jon's horrible. Yeah, he's horrible. It's just the director came out and said it himself. Oh, it's a CGI cost, and we thought it was actually more powerful than just doing what he did. No, you didn't. You can't possibly. No, it's there's n- no way that you. No, it's not in a story, and you think it's more powerful. Yeah, because if you if you <coughs> if you read the books, and if and if you read, you know, the moments of what what John and Ghost are, you know that's not powerful. You would know that John would go over there and say and say something, you, do something, we, hug him, do something. We just talked about. Listen, it. boy, you're going with Tormund now. I love you know, blah blah blah. I mean, you don't you don't get so over dramatic and say I just love. Let Kit Harrington do the work. Let Kit Harrington pet him, grab him by the neck, you know, put his head against ghosts. That's all you need, but you do need mm-hmm. it, all right? So we just talked about two scenes where. Benny Huff and Weiss can justify it however they want, but it, it's what you said. It's hack writing. Okay, so the first, let's, let's do the, the Jon Snow ghost scene first. Jon Snow's leaving Winterfell, the home he grew up in, which he just saved, which he won back from Ramsay. He's leaving it. He's also leaving behind Jon Snow because that's not who he is. He's Rhaegar, uh, he's Aegon Targaryen, and he's, traveling away from Winterfell as a new man with a new truth about his life. And he won the battle that he'd been 
gearing up for for a few years, mm-hmm. won that, and now he's going to he, he's going off as a new man following Daenerys. Mm-hmm. So the way that Needle functions for Arya in the books, right? Needle was home. Mm-hmm. Needle was Jon Snow. That's what Ghost is for Jon. Ghost has been there for him through so many. Well, not in a TV show, but Ghost is that important to right. him. Right, that, that's right. It's not just this incident. It's a lot of the right. instances where they have not involved Ghost or Jon at all. Right. So, so even put aside that it's it's his it's his dog, right? And he loves his dog. Put that aside. The like you said, the thematic parts of it for John, where this is goodbye to this part of the life, what he thought was his life and was his life, it's never, ever going to be the same. So he's right to let Ghost go with Tormund. He belongs north, he belongs north uh, of what, of where the wall was. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but give him a moment to say goodbye, like, because he, he's not just saying goodbye to Ghost there, right? He's saying goodbye to everything. So, that's a scene that can be some amazing writing. It could be an amazing scene. And there's no way it was a production. Are you kidding me? Like the budget, this is the biggest budget of any TV show in history. Right. <laughs> and it says, as someone said, a week before we have Leanna Morlock getting choked out by a CGI freaking giant for Christ's yeah, sake. Come on. So you, you can't tell me you don't have a freaking budget. Right, take, take away, that just, take away the couple, couple of, uh, whites that stabbed Jorah and put that money into. Into into ghost, <laughs> so that just to me just proves that they just don't respect the storyline to to show a proper well, send off to that. Possibly, I think it's more they understand what their wheelhouse is and they're just exploiting it and it's exposing that they are hack writers, right? Because their wheelhouse is like we uh, I've been saying it all season. Their wheelhouse is the politics, but mm-hmm. mostly it's the shock moments, right? So, th- well, and that's HBO. And that's just what HBO's, you know, it's what's, you know, well, it's, I mean, you know, in what Hollywood's about, you know, just get a shock, you know, in, let's, let's do something for a shock. In their defense, that's what's worked, you know, but it's worked. But it's worked. As George is. It's worked. At the adaptation of George, going, exactly, where, you got where it. it made sense. Yep. Right now, they're trying to create these shock moments on their own. It's like, eh. you know, it's like, it's like if Paris Martin start, you know, finish, finishes the, the books for George. Like, yeah, she has an idea of the story, but. You can tell it's not George. So the scene with Regal, everything we said about Euron and and forget about the hook shot he was able to do with the fucking – with the scorpion. Going for that shock moment where she's flying. They have the the music. She looks like she's she – Yeah, it's like, all happy. Ooh, we're going by the dragon's stone. It's all designed. I don't see an army down there. The whole thing is written – and designed from the get-go for a holy shit moment with Regal going right. Down. It's not necessary because it a it, it it makes Danny look like an idiot. Right? She knows she's going into enemy territory. She has to know, even if she doesn't. One of her advisors has to know that Cersei's going to try and get the jump on her. Like Cersei's definitely heard they won. She knows Danny's coming south. Danny should know this too and think Cersei's got a plan. There's no way they should be surprised by an entire fleet of ships. Number one, but number two, it would, it would work better if she saw them because she doesn't know they have scorpions. She sees the fleet, right? And then you have a little dramatic tension. Like, you know, you, you get a camera on a car coming one way, camera on a car coming another way. You know, the cars are going to crash. You know, it, it, it's like a, like, to, uh, um, not Tolkien, um, Peter Jackson does it throughout the Lord of the Rings. And not speaking to the Hobbit trilogy, but the Lord of the Rings. Every single one of the movies, and you know what I'm talking about, whether it's the main battle of that movie or just a, a, a general battle, the two sides are coming towards each other. The music drops out for a moment, right? And there's that build up. Till the two sides clash. You know, you know what I'm talking about. He does it in in, in all the like uh, in in trying, the Fellowship I'm, of the Ring I'm when trying. when uh, when they're waiting on on the uh, the orcs to enter the the tomb of Gimli's father or uncle or whatever. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. As soon as they come in, the music drops out and and it just goes nuts. 
that's dramatic tension and that's what they should have modeled the scene after like Mm -hmm. right right you're taking the music out of it (laughs) so you feel an eeriness almost as if you're they're they're trying to put you into that scene that maybe you're in a dark cave yourself Mm -hmm. because when you put music into it you have even if it's kind of like suspenseful music you still kind of get lost in the music a little bit where if it's just no music you get lost in the scene right and the visuals of her seeing the fleet and being like, you, you, shouldn't, you don't have to write anything. You know what? I'm going to, I got my two dragons. I'm going to take them out right now. You know, forget the fact that why is John not on the other dragon? Forget that. But she's flying with the two dragons. She thinks she can take out the fleet. Maybe she thinks she got, she caught them by surprise. She doesn't know about the scorpions. Maybe she takes out a few ships and then they head over the scorpions. Like that's however you work it. That's good writing. But what they did was purely. For shock. That's it. They wanted, what's the shock moment for this episode? And they, that's what we'll see in these last two episodes is shock moment after shock moment, because that's all that they're, that they're going to be working towards. And you become numb to these shock moments. You know, it's, you know, the red wedding, Ned's beheading. Yeah. There are shock moments that work, but the writing that surrounded it, that led up to that moment, it's logical. It flows. You know, you don't see it coming, but it fits. This is just writing for a shock moment. And you know what? The shocks just don't work anymore. Especially, especially after the, the Arya surprise at the end of episode three. There's no shock moment that is going to do anything for me at all. But I know that's all we're going to get for these last two episodes. Do you think she's going to kill Cersei? Who? Arya. Yeah, may as well. Whatever, just have her kill everybody. It doesn't matter at this point. Yeah, honestly, yeah, I do. I do. Um, I could see we get a Clegane Bowl, and maybe they kill each other, or maybe, you know, uh, Sandra lives, but it's it's Arya that's going to kill the mountain. And then she's going to kill Cersei, and she'll probably kill Euron, too. <laughs> I don't know. They should. They should just like, like, just let Arya go down on her own. And it, it's, it's in a weird way, I almost have some respect for this Arya character because it is the epitome of how ridiculous Benioff and Weiss have gotten with this story. And uh, you know what? I mean, Macy Williams is likable. Just, just let Arya, just let Arya kill everybody. Let her sit the Iron Throne. And that's that would just, that's an end that at least would make sense with what they've been doing. I mean, in all honesty, yeah, I think she'll kill Cersei. I don't think she'll kill the Mountain. I don't think she'll kill Euron, but it would not surprise me if she does. All bets are off. All bets are off. But if you can place bets, bet them on Arya. Um, See, so yeah, I, I hated the Regal scene. I hated the visuals. I hated the surprise. I hated how stupid it made everybody look. Uh, I hated how stupid Euron looked. Like, ugh, right? You know, like, like I'm the only one that can get right. shot. Um, he had that crummy little like shit grin on his face. Mm-hmm. But that's not the end of it. We get one more scene that makes a little bit more sense, but not really. Now, I'm going to say it right now. I just have no. I did not feel any kind of loss with Masande. I'm sorry. It was a minor character in my eyes. I understand she's, you know, I, I understand what that that's going to do with, with Danny, especially at the scene regular die. She's going to flip. Mm-hmm. I get, I get the means. I get the story. But I don't know. I, I'm just not like, oh my God. Oh God. They, they kill him on Sunday. How dare they? On Sunday. <laughs> I love that meme. I said you that one, right? It's, it's great where I'm looking away that it's a Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> it's like me Sunday. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, she's hot. She's fucking hot, dude. So that sucks. Oh, but, she's, you know. I mean, first of all, what, season three or something, season four, like when she's like busted out, I'm like, yeah. oof. But as far as like her character arc, her character, like, yeah, I don't, I don't know. She's Danny, she's Danny's advisor. She's, she's friends with Danny. And, and I get, I, I get how it's so, it's supposed to affect Danny. Yeah. But I, I've just seen so many people just like, oh my God, I just, I, well, cause, okay. That's not a major character no. death. You know, that, that, to me, it's not a major character death. No, but now it's, now we have a completely manufactured Benioff and Weiss holy shit moment. 
because holy shit moment aside of, of her losing her head, the entire character of Miss Sandy from the get-go is redesigned by Ben Affleck. That's not Martin's character. They that's that's mm-hmm. a name of one of Martin's characters and the role they played initially. Sexified, aged up, um, with far less character depth than Martin's character. So from start to finish, Miss Sandy is textbook Benioff and Weiss. So yeah, I, I don't care if she dies because she's not she's nothing. She's just she her her entire storyline was just to lead to this point where she dies. Yeah, you well she loves Grey Worm. Okay, so what? And when, when, and if Grey Worm dies, it's going to be the same thing. Like, yeah, you know, and, and that's what it was with 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 the Long Night is the, the more people should have died. It's plot armor for characters that are essentially plot armor. Right, Dollar said is not he's not the Dollar said talent of the books, but we we like him more because that character was written for the TV show. At a time when the TV show was w- was more faithful to the original material, but like, I mean, I'm surprised Dollar said made it through season six, let alone all the way to to, to that episode. So, right, I knew he was going to die. Like, his the whole purpose of that character making it to that episode is to die. It's like it's like the extra guys they brought beyond the wall last season. Like they are the ones that died. We we uh, we needed some people to die. We, <coughs> we're not going to kill off the seven guys right. we have out here. We we needed some extra right. guys. Obviously, we'll kill Thoros because you know the same thing with Beric Dondarrion. Like he 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 stopped functioning as what Beric Dondarrion is meant to be if he ever was that in the TV show, and he hung around you know, to die. In the please just write his name down so we talk about it in a future podcast. I don't want to go on it right now, but just write just Beric Dondarrion. Just write his name down. Okay. Yes, because there's. Uh, listen, we could do a whole episode on it. it's 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 just they're they're they've you know, so when you ask Martin's ending versus their ending, not talking about leaked spoilers, if they're identical, the difference being is the way George writes it is will be it will be with, with care. You know, it will be with respect to the reader, to the story, and to the character. And it will be. He's he is a an amazing writer, George Hart Martin. Lazy, procrastinates. This uh, this uh, a lot of this he, he, from a certain point of view, you can blame all of this on him. But he does care about his characters, and he cares about the story that he's writing. He's not just going to write just to get a shock moment, and then and it's it's a shame. And maybe I'm going off a little bit here, but. We talked about these guys. It feels like they're hijacking this story. Oh, that, that'd be one thing, but they're also making it a story about shock deaths. You know, like shocking moments at the expense of the story. And that's what's going to be remembered. Um, but anyway, other than a Masandi, just the whole setup of this scene is like, come on, like, use your head. Like, you don't have to be a medieval historian, but, like, use common sense. Like, Cersei's at the top. A, no queen would ever do that. Right. right. I don't even think the hand would do that, but they're both there. All the top lieutenants are right there. Okay, and then, but they have all their, you know, these guys with bows and arrows and Danny's right with. They just could have wiped. They, right yeah, they could have wiped out Danny right oh, there. Yeah, it just ended it right there. Like you don't have to cut the girl's head off. You don't have to cut her head off. Just shoot your arrows. Take them all out. So, Cersei's capable of, you know, killing a prisoner who is may not maybe not royalty, but yes, you know, that's 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 a prisoner that deserves the respect of of a noble prisoner. Because she is, you know, Daenerys on Daenerys' council or whatever. Um, so she's capable of doing that, but she's not capable of just shooting some arrows and, and ending the threat right there. What? Well, it doesn't make sense for anybody. It doesn't make sense that Danny's going to stand there. Right? Because if you're going to parlay queen to queen, king to king, you want to take this city. So you're going to parlay 
you don't parlay right in front of the gates. Mm -hmm. You don't go anywhere near the gates. Who do, what, what kind of queen or king would do that? Like if I was inside, if I was just a soldier and I, I saw the king or queen that wanted to take the city right there, you take them out. Especially with, and they have an army that size, no advantage whatsoever. Like, am I wrong? Like, it's just, just, that's just like the very basic of logical thinking. So again, it's just, it's just the way they were like, like, I, I don't know what I liked. I liked what Tyrion was saying. I liked his pleading, but it, sh it that should never happen ever. Um, it, and again, it's just like Stannis being the first one up the wall. You know, whereas at the real Battle of the Blackwater, Stannis isn't anywhere near King's Landing. He's on the other side of the river. He's on, you know, he's on the other side of, of, of the Blackwater because he's the king and you got to keep him safe. And he's one man. So even if he was fighting, it wouldn't make that much of a difference at all. So another scene designed start to finish for the shock moment. Piss poor writing this week. Even, you know, in a lot of ways, even worse writing than the long night. Especially with nothing really to back it up with. They should have just let Cogman finish this series out. You know, if they were going to mail it in. Let Cogman take credit for it, and you guys can start working on your Star Wars trilogy. Are you going to go see their Star Wars movies, John? I mean, I will. Just, but just because it's Star Wars. Yeah, I mean, honestly, just... I, I, I might not. Like, I, I, you know, you, you went off on them last week. How you've defended them, and you've definitely defended them more than I have. But I've defended them a lot in in recent seasons. I can't. Not only can I not defend them anymore, but like I, it, it they've exposed their flaws, which I didn't see. And if we went back and watched. You know, I bet you even season six, if I rewatched it now, it, looking for their their little tricks and their little shock moments, um, I, I think we'd see a lot more holes than we initially saw. Yeah, it just really is. And in season six, you still had some winds of a winter material, maybe even some leftover Dance of Dragons material. Mm -hmm. But season seven and eight, just showing that they have been, in, you know, um, they have no, you know, you know, book outlet to help them. Well, they're 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 looking. Listen, in in, in some ways, I admire the decision, and it was done from the get go, right? Because George is writing a series called A Song of Ice and Fire, and you hear that name, and you're thinking about. You know, it, it brings to mind like, you know, romanticism. It, it brings to mind like uh, um, an epic tale of, of good and evil, ice and fire, like two opposites. And it's a song, right? It's not like it's a dance where it's versus each other. It's a song. It's a give and take. It's it's broader in scope thematically. It's broader in scope with the narrative, with with the places that it visits. Ben and Weiss and HBO, they call their show Game of Thrones. And that's what they've been doing this whole time. And it makes sense that they wrap up the A Song of Ice and Fire conflict to focus on the politics, the Game of Thrones. So that, that it's not like they're lying to us from the outset that we're not going to get the story we've read. We should know that just based on the name of the show. So I understand that decision. It does kind of make sense because that's the easiest part to write. It's the easiest part to make entertaining is the politicking and the fight for the Iron Throne among the noble houses of Westeros, right? Making the central conflict, not living versus dead, not Westeros versus the, versus the others, but Stark versus Lannister. That's going to be your central conflict from episode one to the final episode. Okay. But... These guys are, 
obviously bored with doing this. Obviously writing episodes that are, are just what they think has worked for this series. And they're, they're even like half-assed when they defend it. And they had so much time to get these episodes right. And they, at the end of the day, they thought, they probably thought, I don't understand why George can't finish these stories. We can finish them. You know, not thinking about the logistics, not thinking about getting the pieces into place. Like, they cheat with all of this stuff, and they've been cheating from, from the beginning of the series. Littlefinger moving around, Euron moving around, mm-hmm. Danny getting from, you know. And, and we let these things slide, thinking that the ending was going to make it all worth it. And now it looks like the ending's not going to make any of that worth it. They have just as much difficulty writing the end of this story as George is having. Except they don't, they're just like, well, whatever. Just, they send a raven and Danny shows up. Whatever, you know, it's, it's, you know, nobody's going to notice. It's, it's been hack writing for a long time now. And it's, uh, I, I, I honestly don't even care what happens next week. I don't care. I don't, I don't, I don't really, there's no, I don't feel like there's any ending that will leave me feeling satisfied. And you know what? For the amount of time I invested in this, if I'm not getting an end ending that satisfies me, I don't care. I don't care. I got to watch it just because there's two more episodes. But like, if this was, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I don't know, John. I don't know. It's bad. Very, very bad. And I'm very surprised. What else you got, man? I'm just trying to think of any of the scenes that we may have forgotten. But, you know, it, it's the little things. It's the little things that they don't explain or don't want to take the time to explain. And a lot of stuff that they do and... You know, right now you have Danny and with on our dragon, and when Enrigal's there, like you don't see there's an army there. There's some ships there. There isn't. You didn't send up any kind of um, scouting ships to make sh- you know, like. But it's like Benny from Weiss aren't even questioning any, these things. Like, do, well, that's what they like, should be. They should at least put. Would, some, you think Danny would look around? You know, you think she'd fly this close to a blind spot, like. Should no word about it. Strategically, she hasn't been in Drainstone for how long now? You have to say, what, a couple of months? <laughs> right? Dude, you know what's funny? Is at the beginning of season seven, and I, I loved season seven, seven, episode one, the Dragonstone episode, when she arrives at Dragonstone. There's no one there. There's no, there's no Baratheon people there. But you remember when I said, wouldn't you, like... Even if you send like 10 guys and have them hide throughout the castle, if you know it's abandoned and you know Danny's coming there, which is information like you can see a fleet sailing towards Dragonstone, you'll get news that Danny is headed to Dragonstone. Even if you, like two guys, just to take a shot at getting rid of Danny. Like it, that didn't sit well with me. But at that point in time, it's like, all right, we'll, we'll press on. I mean, all you had to have done was just show like, a garnison of people, and then the Unsullied come in and just kill them off right away. Yeah. At least you can say, okay, look, they had people there, and boom, the Unsullied, you know, they took care of business. The Rocky took care of business. Whatever logic they had in that episode, it's the complete opposite in this episode. Because, because that was like, well, what, you know, she's going to Dragonstone, like, you know, of course Euron's going to be... What? What? You're not even paying attention to what you're writing. You're not paying attention to episodes that have previously aired. You know, you're not, you're not giving us any, pay- well, like, oh, okay, maybe we've had some payoffs this season. Like, Bran gave Arya the cat's paw dagger last season and said, you might need this. And then Arya kills the Night King with it. Like, that's not exactly the payoff I wanted, but okay. It's a payoff, nonetheless. But you're doing things, and then you're doing the opposite things, and, and, and nothing makes sense, and you're betraying characters that you've already betrayed and it's it's uh it's it's a mess and uh you know 
you're saying like all these characters have plot armor against like supernatural beings, but you know, when it comes to Cersei and Euron, forget they take out a dragon, no problem. You know, they'll, 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 like we're going to start to really see character deaths now, right now. Come mm-hmm. on. Like, come on with that. What do you, like, you think we're that stupid? Either they're like, either they're like really stupid and we haven't noticed, or they think that we're really stupid. And maybe it's a little bit of both. But this is Jesus. You know, Benny Elf and Weiss, they, they, at least as far as HBO, like, like they've earned the ability to do this final season, no questions asked. They've earned that right. Right? But somebody did. Well, no, it's in a question at this point. I'm, they made so much right. money. But somebody, Cogman, somebody should, you know, it's almost like they were, they were writing the script like, like the night before. Like it, it feels like it's a script that was written the night before they started filming. No rewrites. Like they're just that confident in what they're writing. And you gotta what, what, like what? What do you think the writing process is? Because it's written by both of them. Like, do you think they just like, like they probably just call each other up and Facetime each other? Or maybe they just sit around like drinking beers, watching like a fucking, you know, a basketball game or something. Like, what do you? I mean, what do you think Danny will do then? We should probably, uh, you know, I don't know. We'll have we'll have some great music and then we'll shock them with regular. Game. Like, they're just thinking about the shock moments and however you get there, you get there. But I will say one positive about season eight. One positive. Raman Javari. This dude is a master. Most enjoyable part about season eight. The music. It's too bad these guys can't keep up with their composer. Do uh, you want to talk about the Tyrion Varys scene? You got anything to say with that? Yeah, I mean it's just plotting right there. Uh, could be interesting. Does somehow maybe Varys again a whole little Golden Company? The Golden Company switches sides, maybe and goes to John's side. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. I, you know, I don't want to theorize on on anything. That happens, you know, or how to fill in the blanks with some of these leaks. I, I don't, because it doesn't, it doesn't matter. What did you think of the, um, the John and Sam goodbye? You think that was fitting? You think that was good? I think that Sam would want to go with John, right? I think Tormund would want to go with John. It, it's felt, it, it felt, it, John feels like he's so out of place going south. Who's going to be with him? I guess Davos, right? Did Davos go with him? Mm-hmm. So that's it. Of all these guys that, like, you know, treating John like the Beatles the night before, they're all like, all right, well, later, dude. You know, like, the, the goodbye with Tormund, that I kind of get. But Sam, especially, <clears throat> dude, especially with Sam, he's from Horn Hill. His father and his brother are dead. He's the lord of Horn Hill. Why is he not going south to check on his fucking mother? Mm-hmm. Not to mention that he, I don't think he would leave, like, yeah, he got a kid coming. I don't think he would leave John's side. Right, so j- your, your argument is that John inspires loyalty, whereas Daenerys is just out of fear. Okay. But everybody's just being, all right, well, later, John. You know, good luck with that, I guess. You know, if you get if you live and you get back up north, hit me up. You know. Be good to see you again. And Jamie. I I I, I feel like I'm just I'm going off now, but like forget the one eighty to one eighty to one eighty. Forget that. His reasoning, his arc to get to Winterfell. Forget about the plot armor during the battle. Like his decision making, his character growth. It was beautiful. And I felt like it made up for the 180s in the past. And I even understand why he would want to be with Cersei. 
and I even understand him him going and and because we don't know we don't know how that's going to play out. But if he knows that they're all going to like, he's not sitting in on a war council. Like, what was he like? What was he? He was just going to live at Winterfell and be like, well, you know, I, I don't want to get involved because he's my sister. Like, no, dude. Like, you made the decision. You got it. Like, if Tyrion can go south, you can go south. You can't. You can't sit this one out. But then, and but then, you know, and and like what, <laughs> like you you kind of assume that Cersei was was gonna die anyway, right? Because you've seen the two dragons, you've seen what they can do, and mm-hmm. what's the decision that makes him go south? Wait, Cersei killed a dragon. Oh my god! Well, now she's in danger. I better go south. She was in danger as soon as Danny left. She was in danger. So if you weren't gonna do it, like, did you not know that everybody left? Like, were you not aware that that the armies marched and the dragons went south? You didn't know they had a war council to plan this out. You just think everybody's just gonna live at Winterfell forever? Like, wh- what was he doing where he didn't go initially? Mm-hmm. What is that? And then, okay, I- I'm sorry, dude. I I, I feel bad because I I'm just I keep going on and on, but like, Bron, what is that? What what was that? What was that? Well, I guess he's going to get River Run and High Garden now at this point. <laughs> Dude, he <laughs> rode from King's Landing to Winterfell. Just, For just no got reason. In, no problem. Right? No problem. Just got in. Mm-hmm. He doesn't kill them. He basically has the same deal that he's always had with them. He's like, all right, your sister wants me to kill you. So, you know, you, you said that you'd pay double. If somebody wanted me to kill you. And Tyrion's like, yeah, like, yeah, like, like I told you that. All right, so you're going to pay me double or do I got to kill you? He's like, I'll pay you double. I was like, what do I get? High Garden? I don't know. What, what do you want? Like, like you could have gotten the same thing. Just you fight with us. Now, you know what I mean? And then, well, I don't want to, you know, I don't, I don't fight wars no more. Well, then why did you ride all the way north? Like, what are you doing? Like, it was just to shoehorn Bronn in. Bronn should have been killed in that battle last season. Because he's essentially useless at this point. Is that story like going to play out? Is that, that storyline's not even going to play out. I, I could see us never seeing Braun again. Hey, he may as well get like eaten by. No, I'm sure we'll I'm see sure, him again. I I'm mean, sure we will, but it's because they, they, they love they the show D and D love wheeling yes, him out exactly. And he was great in the first couple seasons, and that's why they keep wheeling him out. It's like the Arya thing. You know, if you hit it with one season for for, for Benny Off and Weiss's show. And you're not a character that dies. Like, you're Liana Mormon. The one scene was written for her, and then they wrote all these other scenes for her. You know, to the point where she's killing a gi- – where, like, a, a 12-year-old girl's killing a giant. Yeah. So, it's so ridiculous. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, we probably will see Bron again. But he may as well get eaten on by a bear on the way home. It doesn't matter. It doesn't affect anything with the storyline. There's no way anything Bron does will have any effect on anything. Like, what was that? I'm looking at... I'm sorry, I'm... What are you looking at? I'm looking at a funny meme. <laughs> oh, it's so funny. It's a... Uh, <laughs> top pictures, John and Danny. And she's like, uh, please don't tell anyone to ride it's John with Ari and Sansa. You can't tell anyone. And they're both like, okay. Then it's Sansa, um... Uh, <laughs> Tyrion... You can't tell anyone. Yeah. Tyrion's like, you have my word. Then it's uh, Tyrion and Varys. He's like, and Tyrion's like, you can't tell anyone. And Varys is like, I told everyone. <laughs> and the final scene is from the ne- preview of the next scene. And when John comes at uh, King's Landing, <laughs> and it's a big, this big signage. Welcome home, Aegon Targaryen. <laughs> that is pretty funny. See, that's stuff I'm okay with because it, it it's such a secondhand thought to them that it's like it, it works almost because they're not thinking about it. Uh, dude, and another thing with with the, the bronze situation, like in regards to Jamie. Okay, he already knew Cersei was in danger, and he chooses not to go south. And then it's confirmed that Cersei's in danger, so he decides to go south. Like Bron was going to kill him. Cersei sent him to kill, like, 
he was sent by Cersei to kill them. Like that was your friend and your sister sent him to kill you. So why are you going south? It, like it, it, it just, if, if he's going, which I, I feel like he is to, to help Cersei, it is, that's my favorite character. No matter how it ends for him in Song of Ice and Fire, he's my favorite character. And Benny of Weiss are just kind of like toying with him. They're just, they're, now they're at a point where they're using characters that have, have gone through years long character arcs. They're using them as, as just narrative devices, just whatever, just to get to the next shock moment. The shock moment is what runs. That's the main character of Game of Thrones now is the shock moment, the holy shit moment. And it's, I don't know what else to say. I got nothing else, man. So what else you got? Why is it called the last of the Starks, by the way? What, 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 it, what does that mean? What does, it, what does that mean? I don't know. Uh, I mean, this. I don't know. I mean, there's still be Starks. I mean, already you still have our. I mean, they're not getting married, so they're still Starks. And, yeah, and they are the last of the Starks, for all we know. But the only thing I think it means is it's the it's going to be the last of the line because obviously there's going to be no John Stark or something who's going to get married to someone and can carry the, the Stark name on. There's going to be no one to carry the Stark name on. This is it, the last of the Starks. But I, I don't, whatever. I, you know, Benioff and Weiss. Benioff and Weiss. Um, all right, dude. So, are you excited for next week's episode or what? I mean, uh, what can we expect? Danny's going to lose her mind a little bit more. Oh, she's definitely going that shit crazy. So do, do we get a resolution to the Iron Throne episode five and then uh, like an epilogue? Aftermath season uh, episode six, or do you think that did have his opening in six? I think you have to see some sort of aftermath, and that I did see some setup in six until you know. I I, I don't know. I don't, I don't <laughs> want to say too much because of possible, most likely spoilers. But I think yeah. at this point, the series should end with whatever happens, whoever's sitting in the Iron Throne, and then like then the comet hits King's Landing, and that's Lightbringer. And it's, that's like your last, like, holy shit shock moment. And then the series just ends. At this point, that's, that's how they should, they should that's how they should end it at this point. Just to get that one last, oh my God, you know, cheap, cheap tricks. All right. Well, thanks for listening. We appreciate it. Um, we will speak with you guys next week in regards to episode five and, uh, any guess of what it's going to be called? Um, well, if they keep up with this, uh, the Game of yeah, Thrones, like, they're going to call it. They're going to call it End Game. D and D have just been filed a lawsuit from Marvel Incorporated. <laughs> like, well, we top George Martin's song "Lights and Fire." We could do a better job with End Game too. No, it'll be called uh, something like the Two Queens or the Three Queens. Like the, they, they seem to have this thing of like taking phrases or ideas from the books. Uh, you know, episode six will probably be a Dream of Spring, but episode mm-hmm. five probably be like the Three Queens. I would think, you know, because that's, that's that's been talked about in the book by Littlefinger. Um, they haven't used that title yet, and it would fit. The Third Queen, I guess, being Sansa or. I don't, mm-hmm. I don't know, or I don't know, mm-hmm. or care, whatever. But yeah, my money would be the three queens, a dream of spring, the last two episodes, or end game. That might be a good one. Anyway, facebook.com slash the promised princes. We're on Twitter at princes promised. I've been trying to post more funny memes. Uh, the, listen, the meme game for season eight is, is just, it's off the charts. You know, mm-hmm. it, it's definitely that, that yeah. and Roman Javardi's music, best parts of season eight. Um, more on Apple Podcasts, the Google Play Store, Stitcher, Sound. No, S- Stitcher, Spotify. I don't think we're on SoundCloud because I just haven't posted the episodes there. Nobody listens anyway. YouTube, 
Um, John, did you get to listen to, uh, oh, I didn't go up yet. On the Princes That Were Promised feed, I have the first episode of Patrick's Predator podcast. Uh, oh, yeah. Try, it's dropping tomorrow. Um, and uh, it's just a watch along of <laughs> 2018's The Predator, which <laughs> is one of the worst movies I've ever seen in my entire life. Oh. Really? You know, I think it was on the other night. And, you know, <laughs> it's I, on HBO. I now. didn't watch it. Yeah, because, you know, it's as bad as any movie could be, I still like to get the respect of it to watch it from the mm-hmm. beginning. I, it's not fair to watch the movie that's like 40 minutes mm-hmm. in and, mm-hmm. you know, try just to watch it. I, I, you know, I like to watch, you know, new movies when from beginning to end. People put the effort in. You owe it to yourself as far as the story. Um, mm-hmm. And you know what? The beginning is the best part of The Predator. But, yeah, if you want to listen to that watch along, we talk about a lot of stuff. Talk about – I mean, Pat talks about Predator lore and canon. Uh, we have a little discussion on Shane Black. And uh, it's mostly we're just ranking on a, a movie that is – ay ay ay. You know, Avengers Endgame just looks better and better as this season goes on. Um, you know, as I watch other movies, it's just. Have you seen it the second time? Yeah. So good, dude. So good. I'll probably see it a third time before yeah. you know, it goes. Yeah, yeah you know. I think so. I think so. Anyway, go see Avengers Endgame and uh, we'll talk to you guys uh, next week. Bum 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 b